Today, we're here with our 300 series and we're gonna do a heat exchanger upgrade that we've been working on for the 300 series. And we're gonna fit it up today, show you guys the difference. The end result is pretty phenomenal. What I'm going to do is run through exactly how the car is in stock form. And I'm going to show you the temperatures of where everything's sitting at. The great thing about the 300 series is that because they're a water to air intercooler, I can log things like uh, our engine coolant temp, our um, coolant temp of the actual intercooler system, intake air temperature before and after the cooler. Uh, so with this information, it definitely does help us, you know, collect a lot of data and understand what's going on. So what we are simulating on the dyno is what it would be like in real life conditions on the road with the caravan pulling up a very steep hill and making it up the way to the top we need around that 400 newton meters of torque with this load on i'm just going to go about 90 k's an hour all right so as we put along we can see at the moment we're pulling about 380 newton meters and this is sort of load we're in six gear we're not in top gear at the moment um, and we're continually holding that Straight away, I can see my intake temps are around about that 140 degrees, um, extremely hot. And if you look at the intercooler temperature, already we're at 68 degrees and we're climbing quite heavily. So now we're up 71. So you can see right now, very quickly it's climbing. Our coolant temp is also increasing. We start off at 81, now we're already at 86. So you can see straight away, we're, we're starting to have this issue where we are climbing. We're gonna push this and continually go with this for a bit and I'm gonna show you exactly what happened. So this at the moment is a run that we're gonna be doing for around about 60 seconds. All right, so already coolant temp is now 90 degrees, intercooler temperature is around 92, intake temps around 164. So the cooling, the intercooler system is actually working fairly well. The downside to it is that now the water temp is starting to get hotter and it's struggling to keep that down. Okay, so now we're up to 100 degrees. I can hear the fan come in. So now the, you know, the electronically controlled fan on the front of the motor is coming in. Our coolant temp is around 94 degrees. We're starting to get quite warm now. The intercooler temp is 104. Intake temp's 180. And now we're starting to reduce in power. So I have my foot flat to the floor and I'm buried. I can't go any harder. And now you can see on here, we're gonna be starting to drop torque slowly because the motor is trying to reduce the fueling going into it to save itself. It knows it's getting warm and it's trying to reduce that. And as you can see, my torque's now coming down quite rapidly. My charge intercooler temperature at the moment, the water in that is 113 degrees. Coolant temp's at 96. Intake temp is 175. And my power's still coming down. And that's about a 60 second run. So we'll stop it at that. So just to recap on that, what I was showing there is a the car in factory form. And what it's doing is the fact, the factory ECU is reducing fueling based on temperature, which is a lovely thing. It's exactly what it's supposed to do. The drama here is the fact that the intake temps are extremely hot. You know, running that sort of temperature is wild. The fact that our coolant temperature at the moment in the intercooler system is still at 104 degrees, um, it's slowly maintaining that sort of temperature and just coming down a bit. Um, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna upgrade the heat exchanger in this system, and I'm gonna show you the difference for how long we can do that and what our actual intake temperature will change to. So we'll recap that in a second, and we'll change that out and we'll go through that. All right, so what we have here is our 300 series heat exchanger. As you can see, it's quite a big unit. And if you have a look closely here, it actually goes in front of the condenser and there's a perfect spot that we've made and it sits in there extremely well. Now, this heat exchanger on the 300 series, we have one on either side of the engine bay. We hook this up uh, basically in series. So we're running water through this as well as the other ones. One thing that helps really um, the case here is the fact that not only are we having extra cooling by having this in place, but we're actually adding more volume of water. We add around about just under that five litre mark, it's about 4.9 litres of extra water and extra volume to the system. So the other important thing here to think about as well is that the viscous fan itself, when it locks up, it's actually drawing air through this cooler and it's helping to bring that temperature down. 
These little coolers in here, as you can see, if we zoom in there, they're extremely small and they get heat soaked massively. So these are okay at say 100 kilometers an hour, but once you start to reducing speed, the flow of air going across these is pretty minimal. Um, you're not having any natural draw from the actual engine bay, so you're really relying on the air coming through. This way, we can draw air through with the engine and it makes a massive difference to our temperature, which we're gonna show you very shortly. But so far, this thing is cool and it works extremely well. So we're back in the 300. We've fitted the heat exchanger, our Just Auto's heat exchanger. We've filled it up with coolant, added another roughly five liters to the volume of the system. And now we have the viscous fan pulling air over that cooler, as well as the other two. And what this will do, will dramatically drop that temperature down. And I'm gonna show you now. So we're gonna stabilize again on the dyno. And we did that run for about just over a minute last time. And you can see a, a pretty severe reduction in power as our temp started to get quite hot. So we're gonna basically run along the same wheel again. So get up in six. So at the moment, we're running about 400 Newton meters at the wheels. And I'm just holding that. And I'm just simulating what it would be like driving up a hill with a large van on, hot day, just to see how our temperature is different from where we were before so we can do a back-to-back -back in, in, in real life and see that difference. So our coolant temp's at 89 degrees. The crazy thing here, which is massively different right now, is my intake temperature. It's only at 52 degrees. Before it was in 110, I believe it was, um, at this stage in the run, so it's definitely a lot cooler. Um, my coolant temperature is still quite low. It's in the 70s, 71. So we're actually now stabilized in temperature, believe it or not. Our intake temperature is 64 degrees. It was 180 at this time last in the run. It's come down massive amounts. Our intercooler temperature is 84. Our coolant temperature is 97. And you can see at the moment, we're still producing 400 newton meters of torque. The power's not derating, the computer's not pulling out because our temperature, we're maintaining that cooler temperature for a lot longer, which means we can make power a lot longer. So it's not necessarily saying that we are making more power because we have more density of air or anything like that. I'm basically stating the fact that we can maintain a lower intake temperature for longer, and this inhales the fact that our correction factor in the ECU is not being modified, and then therefore, we're not having poor power come out. So we're reaching on the sort of two minute mark now. Intake temperature's 71 degrees. Inner cooler's at 90 degrees. And that's working extremely well. So we've now come back down to idle. Um, we're stabilizing temperature. It's a massive difference from what we've seen. Now, the cool thing is, is that the data doesn't lie. It shows you exactly what's going on. Um, however, we are adding more volume of water to the system. So that will definitely help with heat soak. Uh, we also are putting a heat exchanger in front of the viscous fan. So remember the fact that now we're drawing a lot more air in through that area. So we're trying to maintain that temperature. The crazy thing is that what we're seeing here is the massive effect that it has on the intake temperature sensor and that intake air temp and the fact that where that, that temperature is. Uh, so there is a, a definitely a, uh, a benefit by putting this on. Um, we can definitely notice the difference as far as when you are towing and when you are starting to load the car up, you have your power consistently there for longer. And that's what it's about, trying to maintain that power that you have and have it there for a longer period of time. So, so far, this has been extremely uh, exciting and extremely cool to sort of come up with this um, information and do something with it and get such a massive gain from it. So the Just Auto's heat exchanger for the 300 series is available now. The guys in the office are more than happy to answer any of your phone calls or queries. If you've got any questions, please yell out. Um, you know, that's what they're there for. Ask them as many questions as you want. Uh, they'll be happy to answer them. So thanks for watching. Cheers.